Hey guys, it's me, Arlene. Welcome to my channel. Today I will be talking about the infamous, super popular, super well-known, all around the world, best-selling perfume in the past less than a decade. It was released in 2012, so ever since this was released, it has been like at the top pretty much at every best-seller women's designer perfume, you know, list. This is Lancome. La Vie et Belle. I'm pretty sure all of you, literally all of you have already tested this, <laughs> um, know about it, probably own it. It is just so, so, so popular. And I don't wear it. Actually, I can't wear it. And I will let you guys know why at the end of this video. <laughs> let me just, let's review this first and give you guys um, my quick thoughts. So as I said, this was released in 2012. Uh, the perfumers are like superstar perfumers. Olivier Polge, who is the house perfumer of Chanel. Also Dominique Ropion. He has made many popular best-selling perfumes. He has done a lot of work for Frederick Mall, uh, Carnal Flower, uh, in Florida Cassi, he's done Kenzo, Elephant, and many other really popular perfumes. And then there's Anne Filippo, who has done also very many uh, best-selling perfumes. And the one that comes to mind is uh, La Chasse aux Papillons <laughs> by L'Artisan Parfumer. Anyways, superstar perfumers. So... I don't know, I guess I should have just should just mention that. And I also will read out the notes to you guys before I get into this review. So the top notes are black currant and pear, middle notes are iris, jasmine, and orange blossom, and the base notes are patchouli, tonka bean, vanilla, and praline. So I have the dry down here. I will spray a test strip here for the opening notes again. <laughs> All right, wow, okay. <laughs> this perfume is so strong, you guys. It is an overwhelming burst of thick, syrupy, vanilla, fruity sweetness. Oh my gosh, you guys, it is like an overload of sweetness and I love sweet perfumes. Gourmands are my are my most favorite types of perfumes, but I gotta say you guys, this this is taking sweetness to another level. <laughs> they have pretty much taken pretty much the maximum amount of sweetness that you can put into a perfume. It's pretty much in here because I have I cannot think of many perfumes sweeter than this. <laughs> so obviously this perfume, for you to be able to enjoy wearing it, you would have to enjoy sweet perfumes. So, oh my gosh, <laughs> so overwhelming, you guys. Uh, there's vanilla here as the main note that I smell. Of course, there's fruits. Uh, the blackcurrant and pear are listed. But when I smell this in the opening, I don't get much of the black currant. I do get a lot of pear though, definitely like a juicy, sweet, ripe pear along with a strawberry kind of smell. So not real strawberries though. It kind of smells more like artificial, artificial strawberry scent that you would find in candies. But to me, the pear is most prominent. It is intense. It's bold. It is like a statement fragrance. It can be, I think some people might even find it offensive because, because of this like really intense scent that it gives off immediately right in the opening. There are chocolate uh, praline notes in here. Yeah, there's in the base notes, there's praline notes. Um, I don't get any chocolate or praline on me at all whatsoever from beginning to end at all. So. Uh, what I do get is like this intense fruitiness that is just undeniable, really in your face, really intense, beast mode. And along with that fruitiness, that intense sweetness, I also get like a muskiness in here as well. And the muskiness is kind of 
a little bit chemically, but not, not super like intense chemicals, but I do kind of sense a little bit of a chemical musk in here. So that is the opening of this fragrance. <laughs> so if you are able to get through that really crazy opening, the mid and the dry down, to me, it gets better. In the mid, the whole thing, at least on my skin, I have it here as well. Everything just gets more softer and more polite. It's still super strong, you guys. It's still beast mode. It's still very noticeable, but it just has toned down a little bit and gotten a little bit quiet, quieter, but that's not saying much because even in the mid, it is still like pumping out <laughs> really, really strongly off of me. Um, I get a little bit of powderiness. There's iris in here, so there's a little bit of a powdery iris that I get on my skin. Um, and I get some florals too. And the florals that I detect the most um, is mostly the iris, the powdery iris, and also orange blossoms. So a little bit of freshness comes out. Um, still fruity, just a little bit less fruity, uh, but still really, really sweet. <laughs> like crazy, crazy, crazy sweet. Um, also, you guys, in the mid and dry down, I also detect the patchouli. And the patchouli in here is, if I'm gonna be honest, it makes me almost feel like it's drying my throat. There's like a scratchy patchouli note in here that when I smell it, it kind of like, <laughs> I feel like I'm getting like, my, my neck is getting clenched a little bit, like a little bit choked out a little bit. And um, I don't know, maybe it's just me. It's just like a drying kind of sensation. Like I can even feel it right now when I talk to you guys and smell this. The patchouli is a scratchy patchouli. Hopefully that makes sense, but it's not my favorite part of this perfume <laughs> at all. Uh, after all of this though, I still think it smells really nice, you guys. There's, there's a reason why it's a really, really popular perfume that just literally won't ever go away. It, it smells nice. <laughs> It is a Siage Monster performance, is crazy. I have tested this perfume so many times and I can smell it on my clothing. The next day, I've even smelled it on my hand after 24 hours <laughs> or wherever I, like you would, if I spray it on my arm, I smelled it. I could still like faintly smell it. So there's no problem here with performance whatsoever. Um, it does give off a beautiful scent cloud, a uh, big aura around you. Um, I would say even more than a meter away from you, you can still smell it. It's just, you know, like I said, if you are uh, into skin scents, this is not it for you. It is really, really strong. Beast mode, one of the best performing perfumes that I have ever come across in women's designer perfumes. So all in all, do I think this smells good? I think it does. You have to be in the mood though to wear it because it is so familiar and really, really popular and so sweet that I think that if you go a little heavy, too heavy on the sprays, you might regret it because <laughs> you might feel a little bit choked out or you might just feel overwhelmed with all of the sweetness and just, just too much of a good thing is can be a little you know can be a bad thing <laughs> if that makes sense so now to answer the question oh, of why i will not wear la vie belle even though i think it smells nice <laughs> well you guys this perfume gives me a headache it literally gives me a headache like now that i'm like i just sprayed this on and I've, just for this review, before this review, and when I was smelling it off of the test strip, I can already sense <laughs> a headache coming on. It's a mild headache though. It's not like, you know, super, it's not like intense or anything, but I, I feel a little bit of a, a nausea or something, you know, that's kind of inducing a headache in me. And that is why I can't wear it. I just can't. <laughs> um, I'm not sure what it is I'm reacting to. Maybe it's just too... I, maybe my nose or my brain can, can, just can't handle it. There must be something in here that I'm reacting to. But it is a little bit... 
it is too overwhelming for me. It's too strong. Even going a little bit lighter on the trigger with this one, it's still, it still like doesn't make me feel, I feel, I feel a little bit like I'm choking. <laughs> so yeah, that's the reason why I don't like it for the people, why I can't wear it for the people that don't get headaches to this. Mm. It smells nice, but then again, it's really, really popular. It's really recognizable. It's, um, it can be obnoxious if you overspray, um, even because the sillage is so, so big with this one and the scent trail too, that people will recognize it. People will guess, oh, are you wearing La Vie Belle? <laughs> uh, I'm not sure if you want to be wearing what everyone else is wearing or if you want to smell unique. Uh, that's up to you. Um, I would say that um, if you are a fan of this, I mean, if I didn't get a headache from this, I would probably wear it very, very sparingly, like a very small spray, maybe at the back of my neck. So I wouldn't have to like constantly whiff it in because when I have done that and sprayed it here, uh, that was uh, not a good thing. I felt nauseous <laughs> and stuff. And yeah, it just didn't work for me. So although I think it smells really, really nice uh, with super, super sweet, intense sweetness, vanilla, and iris and floral notes and it performs really well my body just my nose my brain cannot handle it i just can't handle it you guys and i'd rather uh wear sweet perfumes in other perfumes in other in a different manner with other perfumes maybe toned down or at least with ingredients that don't give me a headache <laughs> anyways so that was my review on la vie et belle I hope you guys enjoyed this review. Uh, let me know what you guys think about this perfume. I'd love to hear it. I know that uh, a lot of, there's so many, so many fans of this perfume and so many flankers. Every, every single time there's a new one, I get it. It is really, really popular and it smells nice. But um, then there's that other side that is really, really, like other group of people that is really tired of this perfume. <laughs> uh, it can get a little annoying or obnoxious and stuff like that. And I guess one or the other, or you're in the middle, like that's possible too. But anyways, thank you guys so much for uh, tuning in today. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care, bye-bye.